Hello, hello, welcome back. We're going to talk about alveolar arterial gradient, also known as the AA gradient. The AA gradient is the difference between alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen. And for the visual people like me, we're going to take our alveolar oxygen and we're going to minus our arterial oxygen. Remember, alveolar oxygen has a capital A and arterial oxygen has a lowercase a. What is a normal AA gradient? Our normal AA gradient is going to be less than 15 millimeters of mercury. Remember this number because we're going to practice. To calculate the AA gradient, we're going to need an arterial blood gas to figure out the arterial oxygen, and we're going to need to use the alveolar gas equation to figure out the alveolar oxygen. Here's a reminder of how to do the alveolar gas equation. But because this is the AA gradient video, we're going to focus on the AA gradient math. Let's practice. So our alveolar oxygen is 98. We did an ABG and we figured out that the arterial oxygen is 95. So 98 minus 95 is 3. Our AA gradient is 3. Is this normal? Yes. Remember, a normal AA gradient is less than 15 millimeters of mercury. Why do we need to know this calculation? Well, it's going to help us diagnose why our patient is desaturating. For example, our patient is desaturating. We're going to calculate our, our AA gradient. And if it's normal, which means it's less than 15 millimeters of mercury, our cause of our desaturation is likely hypoventilation. We can fix this by changing our ventilator settings. We can increase the tidal volume or increase the respirations. But which one is best? You're right, tidal volume. That's gonna give us the biggest bang for our buck. So our patient is desaturating and we calculate the AA gradient and it's abnormal, meaning it's greater than 15 millimeters of mercury. Our cause of the desaturation is most likely alveolar dysfunction. Examples of things that increase the alveolar concentration gradient are atelectasis, pulmonary edema, vasodilators, and aging. So, our patient desaturated and we figured out that our AA gradient is abnormal. If it's atelectasis, we can perform alveolar recruitment maneuvers, such as increasing the PEEP. If it's pulmonary edema causing it, we can give them a diuretic. Let's practice this concept. Our patient's pulse ox is 85, the, our, the alveolar oxygen is 105, and the arterial is 95. Calculating their AA gradient gives us an AA gradient of 10. Is this normal or abnormal? What is the cause and what can we do? You're right, 10 is a normal AA gradient. Remember, our AA gradient is less than 15. That is a normal one. Because it's 10, our likely cause of our desaturation is hypoventilation. What we can do is increase our tidal volume. Here's another one. Our patient's pulse ox says 95. Alveolar oxygen is 105 and arterial oxygen is 95. Our AA gradient is 10. Is this normal or abnormal? Do we need to do anything about this? You're right, it is normal, and we don't need to do anything. The patient looks like they're okay for now. Let's continue to monitor. Finally, our last patient. Oh no, he's desaturating to 83%. Our alveolar oxygen says 313. Our arterial says 95. The AA gradient is 218. Is this normal? What likely caused this? And what can we do about it? You're right, guys. This is abnormal. Our AA gradient is 218, which is way greater than 15. So our alveolar dysfunction is the main cause. But there are different causes of alveolar dysfunction. We need to ID and treat the cause. So if it's pulmonary edema, maybe we need a diuretic. And if it's atelectasis, maybe we need to increase our PEEP. Thanks for watching.